So one of the topics goes hand in hand. Net play and reaction time. The other topic is we're gonna talk about training mode. I'm gonna go into training mode. So the actual question I got was how good is netplay? Should I use it to advance my skill level? What do you think? And why? So for me for me obviously I'm a, a netplay supporter. I think netplay is great and very useful. It just you have to use it properly. You can't only netplay. The quick answer is the best way like the best way to grow is by playing in all sorts of formats. But the best part about netplay is definitely learning matchups. Like say you're in a say you're not lucky to, enough to live in a fighting game hub, but you still live around a couple of people. Depending on what game you play, like take a SF4 of 39 characters, Blaze Blues at what, like 26? You will probably have a gap in matchup experience, and that matters. If you won't know how to punish things, you won't know how to... You might not recognize normals, jump arcs, air dash lengths, back dashes, all sorts of things. Now, Melty's at 93 technically, but there's really like only 20 characters you have to worry about. The other characters are just like whatever. For a, a game of a small cast, like Persona, it's... You might, you'll probably be able to play all the matchups in real life, but for games of larger cast, it's kind of hard. So netplay is really good for that. Netplay is also a really good place to try out new things. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times before. Uh, before a major or something, if I come up with something crazy, I'll go try it on netplay. I'll try it on people on netplay and see how they react. And if they deal with it in ways I don't think of, or they get hit in ways I don't think of, like some people, I'll create a setup and I'm like, they won't block this. They'll get hit by it, as in they'll block, they'll be in the setup, they'll try to block and get hit. But sometimes people just get hit, and then you're like, uh... Right? You gotta check for that. Or for games with quick stand as opposed to laying there, your setup might rely on them getting up right away. If people tend to not tech, then you need an answer for that. All sorts of things you might want to check. That's another good reason for netplay. Netplay, I also think, is a great way to log time if you don't live in a big scene. So. As I said, maybe like an episode or two ago, it's really nice. The best, the hardest part of a fighting game is at the beginning, where you have to put in all the time. So net play is a really good way for you to like not need to have people in your area to play right away to get games. To just log the time and get used to get used to hit confirming, get used to like going into your setups all sorts of things of course there are downsides to netplay as <laughs> as you just saw if you guys are watching me play persona or sf4 earlier there are definite downsides to netplay um it's def it's harder to block it's it could be harder to move it could be harder to just do basic things that you think are okay but you can mitigate this, hopefully you can mitigate this by getting the best possible connection. Uh, don't use wireless if you don't have to. Don't play people with one bar like I do. <laughs> I like, don't care as much. So if there's, if there's like a one bar and it's not stable, actually you shouldn't even play them. You should try playing people in your relative area or coast. Try to not go under the medium, whether it's like yellow bar, SF4, two bar, blaze blue, persona. Try not to go under that. 
you might get really angry. Um, of course, you're gonna have ranked monsters if you play ranked. I know the general consensus, consensus, excuse me, is that people don't really care about ranked. I do care about ranked. So, they're going to run into maybe ranked monsters who have really fucked up settings because they're just trying to grind rank instead of just play you so you might have to deal with that but even in rank you can set what you want to appear in your search so that can be helpful um one important thing a lot of players i see definitely in bb not so much in p4 but this exists sf4 i'm not sure so i just go into random lobbies a lot of people create closed lobbies and play their friends, which is fine. But if your goal is like, if your goal is to improve, you don't want to just restrict to, uh, excuse me, you don't want to just restrict yourself to your friends. The best part about netplay is that you can create an arcade like experience where you can just go into a random room and just play random people. The ability to just play and beat random people is so important to your overall skill level and for tournament play. If you take a tournament like EVO, so Persona, Persona had four, a 432 man bracket. Maybe next to SF and Marvel, that's not shit, but that's a 432 man bracket. If you went with your friends and only played with your friends before the tournament, you and your five friends. That means if you only played your five friends and went to no tournaments, you only know how to play against five people. There are 432 people at this tournament. Not good. If, if you're able, the best part about playing just random people is that it really helps you learn how to switch gears. So if you play someone... So first of all, you're going to be you're going to be used to the random troll tactics. Like the other day, yesterday actually, when I was streaming, I played a Zangief who liked to whiff normals and command grab. I got hit by it a lot, but now I know that that's a thing that exists, and I know how to deal with it. That's fine. If I only played, let's say, I had a really good Zangief near me who just didn't really do that, except in certain situations, I wouldn't be ready for that, and I'd get bodied if I ran into that in tournament. So it's really good to help you be able to quickly identify what kind of player you're playing against. Because if you just play random people, especially ranked, depending on what game you're playing, of course, you just have to jump in. Jump in, you play, and then you just see how it goes. And you're able to just be very fluid. Very able to switch and adapt to totally random players you've never seen before, which is great. Um, lag is obviously an issue with playing random players, but I mean, that's, that's why you check the connection. If the connection's not good, just bounce. It's fine. It doesn't hurt anyone. It doesn't hurt their feelings. It doesn't hurt your feelings. You just move on. So that, that I think is the number one benefit along with, I guess tied with learning matchups that you might not get to see a lot. Um... I'm going to use Spinatic Ken as an example. If you haven't played an S-Lab and then you run into Banana Ken in tournament, you're just going to get mauled. Like you have no idea what's going on. He knows everything what's going on because he knows every matchup. He's going to knock you down and kill you. And then if you manage to get him to Awakening, he's going to use Titanomachia and kill you anyway. And he's going to bait your shit because you're going to be very frustrated. And you're going to take a lot of damage for no reason. And then you're going to die. It's going to be a really quick two minutes. It's going to be very, very, very quick two minutes. Now. Another, th another thing you can do. With netplay. Is. Uh, I do this in Persona. You can make a lobby. To just. Make an open lobby, the only thing you set is a connection restriction, and just set it to like one versus one, but try not to play too many games. Like long sets, long sets are important, but 
I, I usually set it like f first to five. Kind of, first to five is a good... Like the max amount of games you could play is... I guess nine. Max amount of games you could play is nine, so... It's a nice... It's not too long. Not too short. You have time, like say if you don't know a character matchup, you have time to get used to things that the character is doing and you have time to adapt so you have like so what my personal preference to do is like i'll set the first to five but during the first two out of three games i'll be very focused on winning the first two games getting two wins for the other person because if that's tournament and he's he's up two to one on me that means i'm gonna lose his bracket while i'm out and then after that I'll try to get to three wins before the other guy gets to three wins. Because again, if it's a final, then if he gets to three wins, he either reset the bracket or won the tournament. After the three, then then I just try to close it and get to five. Because that's just the setting I have, getting first to five wins. Of course you want to win that too. And preferably if you win 5-0, then great. You just scrape them but if you're if you're let's say 3-2 and then he makes it 3-3 then you have more time to there's still room for the game to kind of between you two to kind of change you can kind of adapt to what they're doing ft10 i think it's it's good for exhibitions it's good if you hate the other guy it's good <laughs> if you want a money match but i don't think it's good for net player or session they try not to Try not to play more than FT5 or FT7 versus one person. Like, after five, first to five or seven, get up, play someone else, take a break, and then go back in. Because a, a really big disadvantage of playing someone, one person for too long, is that eventually, if they're good too, right? It doesn't, they don't even have to be good, excuse me. The, the games can kind of get ridiculous after once you start getting to ft10 plus they can kind of get a little crazy because of all the adaptations you're doing in between each other to different things so because at least my personal goal out we enter tournaments so i want to be able to win tournaments so i try i try not to play two long sets besides when i'm learning if i if there's not that many people there i'll just switch characters to just change gears a little bit. If you don't play other characters, then I don't know what to say. You, sh you should. You should play the characters you hate. That's how I feel. <clears throat> now I'm going to tie this in to... Reaction. The... Everyone's favorite subject. Everyone's favorite, favorite subject. Reaction, right? Reaction time. Oh. Reaction time and reaction time and net play. Reaction time. Whew, this. <laughs> okay. Let's start with this. So first off, let's be very real and say we're all mostly average people. Mostly average people. So. The fastest we have, as far as moves go, I'm going to talk about highs and lows specifically. Once you get faster than 22 frame, like 22 or faster, it gets hard to block. Like, period. I don't care who you are unless you're very special. That 22, 23 frame overhead will be difficult to block depending on how subtle the animation is. So if you take like a... If you take like a Lychee 6A, that that animation's a little subtle. If you take a Naoto's, Naoto's um, AOA is 24 frames, but it's really subtle. Jam's Dust, yeah, that's a good example. Jam's Dust, really subtle. I don't know the speed for that, but very, very subtle overheads. Those can be in the 23, 24 range, and they might still be difficult to block. Um... Jin's overhead is 19 frames. I don't... You have to be very focused to block that. TK Bad Moon, you can't block on reaction. I don't care. 
what people say. You, you're not blocking it on reaction. You, I think it's easier to block. <sighs> okay. TK. No, Jin's Jin's is 19. Jin is 19, for sure. Jin's 19. It's and it's always been 19. So if you're playing an Arxis game, you have the especially Blaze Blue. Not so much uh, Persona, and I'm not sure about Guilty Gear what the Gatling rules are into Dust. But you have the advantage of knowing Gatlings that go into overhead. So take Jin's 6A. 6A is much easier to block after 2A or 5B than just raw. Much easier. Why? Because there's a Q. The Q is the 2A or the 5B. So when you see the 2A and the 5B, and someone does 2A, 6A, or 5B, 6A, you block it. It's like, man, I just blocked that shit on reaction. You're actually anticipating. When, when you're, when you're at anticipating, you can react quicker. If Jin does it just raw, just runs up to you and goes, boop, 6A. You are probably not blocking that, unless you're anticipating it or just very, 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 very focused. Once you get into 18 frames, once you get into 18 frames, it's instant. Instant. 18 frame overheads. 18 frame overheads. I can't list a lot of 18 frame overheads. Uh, but once once you get to 18 frames or less, it doesn't matter whether it's like a 14 frame overhead or an 8 frame overhead or whatever it's very it's pretty much impossible to block on reaction is a 6k is 18 frames really really that's fucked up <laughs> that's screwed up i'm sorry that's screwed up that's fast that's fast that's whew. and even then Even then, with anticip anticipatory reaction, you can still, you can get to that like 16, 17 frame time, but it's still anticipating. You're still anticipating. So you're still vulnerable to the low. Now, in my opinion, I personally like using the cues that the game gives me to block things if possible if at all possible so things like knowing memorizing gatlings um for street fighter it's knowing spacings and knowing if there's a target combo like guile has the target combo and there's a certain space that they like to do it so at that space i will just sometimes stand up um Persona, most, you can do AOA off any normal, but there's certain ways people like to do them generally, and so once you, once you get used to seeing that, it, they get much easier to defend against. Um, if you can, if you have the time, and you do the research, and you can minimize the hard to blockables, to just stuff that you can pretty much block, your defense will be, at least against attacking, will be almost impenetrable. And then, oh excuse me, and then what you will have, what they have to do is use real 50-50s against you. True 50-50s. When people say, I'll, I'll use Mitsudo as an example, anytime someone says they can block Mitsudo's mix-up on reaction, I just laugh at them, because they're full of shit. Because they don't know. They don't know how it works. They don't understand. You can make it. There are ways to make setups, 50-50s. You are not reacting to 50, like a true 50-50, you will not react to. It's true. Those ambiguous cross-ups in Street Fighter, there's some you could actually react to because the character has to be in a specific space. The character attacking you has to be in a specific space to do the cross-up. Or they have to do a certain normal for timing. So 
So, like, say for Kami, there's some setups where you have to, instead of doing, say, the standard setup is back throw, standing jab, and then a dive kick. And then you fake them out by taking a step and doing a, a standing jab, but you can still do a cross-up or in front anyway. But on some characters, let's say you could do a crouching medium kick for timing, and then you can get a cross-up jump medium punch. But if an appear uh, excuse me, if an experienced player sees that crouching medium kick, he knows the cross-up is coming, so he's just gonna block cross-up. It's fine. You can use cues like that to help you out a lot as well. Um, another thing that will help your anticipatory reaction, looking at the opponent's meter will be very helpful. Things like looking at the opponent's meter or getting ready for one more cancel animation. Yeah, Hazama is a great example. When Hazama has 50 meter, if you're not ready to stand up, you deserve to get hit by 6A. Hazama probably won't do 6A without 50 meter. You deserve to get hit by that overhead if you're not looking at that. Um, another character, Labyrinth and Shadow Labyrinth, you should definitely pay attention to their meter. Chia, on the other hand, you don't have to pay attention to her meter because her her tricks with meter have... What's the best way to word this? Her, her Rampage, the initial hit that you one more cancel, has a decent amount of blocks done so that you have time to see and hear the one more cancel and then be ready to guard. But then, when you take Labyrinth and Shadow Labyrinth, Guillotine one more cancel, that move doesn't have a lot of blocks on. So you don't really have time. And then the low that comes out after is pretty quick. So you don't really have time to switch. So it's worth investigating and seeing what, what characters can do with their meter and what you could do against it and whether you can block it on reaction or have to anticipate it. Now in the case of net play, this is, I was just talking about all real play, live play. So in the case of net play, reacting is going to be harder, <laughs> obviously. Um, games with chains and gatlings, you can still do it because if you know their gatlings, you know once they reach a certain point, they can either do X or Y. So it helps a little bit, but it's still going to be a little difficult. Um, for games like Street Fighter Online, I I have to yield me overheads. I can't block them on reaction. It's too hard. Same with uh, the fast airways and Persona. You can't block on reaction. Um, but uh, I kind of use it as just motivation. Because, first of all, it motivates me to not even get in those situations in the first place where they can do that to me. So it encourages me to like build up my offense and my neutral game to the point where this opponent who has these easy, like Ragna, who has an easy overhead, like one button overhead that's easy to hit confirm, I don't even get in that situation because I keep him out, he can't get it on me, I knock him down, I kill him. So that's fine. Uh, games with Gatlings into overheads are really nice because it does make it easier to block most overheads. Not all, not everything, but some things. Um, netplay takes away from reaction across the board though. Like, uh, for example, neutral, if you play a neutral based character, then if you're if your character is not the type to predict a move, if you want to react to where the opponent's moving, well, then it's going to be more difficult to do that. Uh, it might be harder to do certain confirms. It might be... Well, of course it's going to be more difficult to block, tech throws. It's only slightly more difficult, but it's enough that it matters. So. Like I said before, you want to try to mitigate this as much as you can by having the best connection. Make sure your connection is wired and stable. 
play people preferably in whatever region of the country you are so east coast players don't go much farther than midwest midwest north east canada and florida is my limit if you're on the west coast you have Van uh british columbia pacific northwest and southwest to play against midwest you can kind of play mostly everyone i guess except the extreme outside regions okay um questions 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 i'll take questions for like five minutes before moving on Preferably questions related to the topic, not just some random shit questions. I'm planning on coming to Austin. Just, just not, not yet. Things are coming, things have to come down the pipeline first. I told you I wanted to go. <clears throat> Alright. I guess, I guess I'm just going to move on.